severely. Yeah. All right, it's about uh, 3.01, and we will call this uh, meeting of the Board of Supervisors to order, and I will look over to County Council and ask if we have a need for closed session this afternoon. Yes, Mr. Chair, there is need for closed session, and I do anticipate an announcement out. All right, that being the case, we will, uh, we will make the announcement out um, as soon as we're as soon as we're done with closed session, and but before we go in, we do have uh, Vice Chair McCarry has a recusal, I believe. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a statement I'd like to read in a record. It says, it, it has been brought to my attention that I received a campaign contribution of more than $250 from a party with respect to today's agenda item B within the 12 months prior to the proceeding that this is the subject of the genesis item. Excuse me. For that reason, under Government Code Section 84308, I must recuse myself from making, participating in making, voting on, or in any way using my position as a supervisor to influence a decision regarding this agenda item. Therefore, I am excusing myself from this part of the board meeting and will not discuss or take part in a governmental decision with respect to the matter. The clerk is requested to make this announcement part of the official public record of today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. So we will now... Uh, so, uh, I, I too have I'm a, sorry, also Supervisor Shecklian has yes. a recusal. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I too um, have received a campaign contribution of more than $250 from a party with respect to today's agenda item B within the 12 months prior to the proceeding that is subject of the agenda item. For that reason, under Government Code Section 84308, I must recuse myself from making, participating in making, voting on, or in any way using my position as a supervisor to influence a decision regarding this agenda item. Therefore, I am excusing myself from this part of the board meeting and will not discuss or take part in the governmental decision with respect to the matter. The clerk is requested to make this announcement part of the official public record of today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Shucklin. Do we have any others? <laughs> All right, hearing none, then uh, we will convene into closed session. Uh, there will be an announcement out uh, at the conclusion of closed session, and then we'll reconvene at 6 o'clock this evening uh, for open session at Dinuba City Council Chambers at 405 East El Monte Way. Right there. That's exactly where we need to be. <laughs> so, yeah. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out uh, this evening. Uh, for our October 17th meeting of the Board of Supervisors, and we're going to start this evening with an invocation by Pastor Michelle McGee, and she's from Palm United Methodist Church here in Danuba. Then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Supervisor Valero directly after. I'll be, off I'll be offering a bilingual prayer, and I invite you to be in a prayerful attitude with me. Oremos. Fuente de vida y esperanza, source of life and hope. Gracias por estos siervos civiles y su compromiso para el bien común. Thank you for these civil servants and their commitment to the common good. We pray for this meeting today and always. For wisdom, patience, to listen well to one another. Pedimos sabiduría paciencia, y poder escucharnos bien. Help us through decisions we make to care for all, especially the most vulnerable. Ayúdenos por las decisiones que tomemos hoy a cuidar a todos, especialmente los más vulnerables. May all that we do lead to true justice and peace for all. Que todo lo que hagamos nos lleva hacia la verdadera justicia y paz para todos y todas. Que tu presencia, fuente de vida, esté en medio nuestro. May your presence, source of life, be in our midst. Amen. Please join me in saluting our nation's great flag. Ready? Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Supervisor Valero, for 
Started off, and next we're going to go to item number one. This is our board of supervisors matter. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the supervisors to start the function. Before we start board of supervisors matters, may I do the announcement out of closed session? I have an announcement out of closed session that we had earlier before we do the uh, next portion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Announcing out for item C, the Board of Supervisors directed legal counsel to refrain from opposing debtor's motion to establish a reduced taxable value of the personal property located at debtor's former retail store at 3125 South Mooney Boulevard, Visalia, California, in the case of Inri Bed Bath & Beyond, Inc., at all debtors. United States Bankruptcy Court, District of New Jersey, case number 23-13359-VFP. The roll call vote was made upon motion by Supervisor Shuklian, seconded by Supervisor Vanderpool. The motion passed unanimously. Reporting out for item E, the Board of Supervisors authorized legal counsel to initiate litigation. After the action is formally commenced, the title and nature of the action, the defendants, and other particulars will be disclosed to any person upon inquiry, unless to do so would jeopardize the county's ability to effectuate service of process on one or more unserved parties, or would jeopardize the county's ability to conclude existing settlement negotiations to its advantage. A roll call vote was made upon motion of Supervisor Vanderpool, seconded by Supervisor Valero. The motion passed unanimously. And that concludes today's report out. Thank you, Madam Council. All right, and now we will go back to uh, Supervisor Valero for Board of Supervisor Matters. All right, thank you, Chair. Uh, these past few weeks have been very busy. Uh, I want to give kudos to the Tulare County Hispanic Leadership Network for its recent event titled From Classroom to Leadership, Building the Instructional Pipeline. It was a full packed house with administrators, leaders, and educators who want to continue improving their talents in the academic area. And so I want to also commend Yolanda Valdez, who's here, who serves as the regional director for the entire state. Uh, Tom Rooney, superintendent of Lindsay Unified, gave a keynote um, on his own journey and the experience leading to an impressive school district that he leads here. Um, so it was a great event overall. Uh, that same evening, I attended the Cutler Consolidation Meeting, and there were a good amount of residents there just expressing their concerns, understanding what it means for consolidation and what it uh, means in terms of the state working with the local uh, PUD to make that happen. Uh, I also participated in the Audit Committee meeting where we reviewed and accepted the Health and Human Services Agency cash receipts cycle risk-based audit report, reviewed and accepted the internal assessment report, and we also approved the update to the two-year audit plan for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. I uh, then attended the Care Portal Active Community Gathering where my colleague Pete Vanderpool served on the panel. It was a great time to learn what Care Portal has done with partnerships created between faith institutions, the county and agencies willing to support our most vulnerable communities. That evening, I rushed over to the Monson Sultana Elementary School Carnival, and then the Ivanhoe Trunk or Treat event, and then followed by the Hands in the Community Fundraiser at the Convention Center. It was great also to attend the United Way Annual Breakfast and Recognition Awards, where my colleague Amy Shuckley served as the MC. She did a great job. Always great to hear about individuals who are working hard to improve our, and uplift our communities. This past weekend, including lots of events also, I participated in the Lions Club Car Night event, where I did not go home with the 1991 Miata. Um, I also said goodbye to my reign as the inaugural Dancing with the Stars Tulare County 2022 dance competition on Saturday night and shared remarks to this year's participants. Young Life puts on this annual event to help support its youth and teen moms programs, giving them hope, direction, and mentorship. So I'm hoping maybe Supervisor Macari will be next in line for the dance. All right. Uh, uh, this year's winner all, uh, included TCO Superintendent Tim Heyer, who was best in dance, 
and then Dina Gambini, who raised the most funds, over 20000 And in total, more than $65,000 was raised on Saturday night. On Saturday, Well hosted the San Joaquin Valley Water Summit. In attendance were 40 local leaders from throughout the region. I welcomed the audience to Tulare County and shared the challenges of the region. And so this was an event where community water outreach experts shared the best practices for engaging input and design and implementation of water conservation strategies. And then also um, researchers shared info information on the multi-benefit land repurposing program and the changes needed to improve environmental conditions for residents throughout the region. And then last night at our Tulare County Regional Transportation Authority, we selected our TCRTA director after a few months of that search. Uh, today, I attended the College Pledge at the Fresno City Hall Chamber, where Josh Friday, the CEO of California Volunteers, welcomed a new cohort of students and got them ready for job core placements across the Central Valley that they will be doing for the next two years. This week, I will be attending the Kings Basin Water Authority Board meeting, then a debrief and review of Saturday's Well Conference, and then I will be heading over to Sacramento for the remainder of the week to attend a workshop on realignment dollars. And then lastly, I just want to uh, congratulate Manuel Munoz, who is a resident of Dainuba, and he recently received the 2023 MacArthur Genius Award um, and also uh, Cornell MFA 90, 19, uh, 1998. And if you don't know, but the MacArthur Genius Award comes with $800,000 per, per awardee with no restrictions attached. Right. So, <laughs> so he will be receiving $800,000. And so um, it's a prize awarded annually by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation to typically between 20 and 30 individuals working in um, any field who have shown extraordinary originality and dedication in their creative pursuits and a marked capacity for self-direction and are, um, again, creative in their work that they do. And so, again, he's a native of Dainuba, but is a current professor at the University of Arizona. And that is all I have, Chair. Thanks, Supervisor Valero. And I'm going to skip over to the other end and go to Supervisor Vanderpool. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the opportunity. Good evening, everyone. Great to be here, and even better to have uh, microphones to make the voice sound fuzzier than it usually is. A um, couple things I wanted to uh, go over this week. Um, we have on uh, Thursday a, a pretty significant event that has been uh, uh, months of effort by uh, not only Tulare County, but Kings County uh, and multiple partners, and that is the formal unveiling and uh, community outreach event uh, pertaining to the Kings Tulare Master Plan for Aging. Uh, I have served on the uh, Kings Tulare Area Agency on Aging for 15 years, um, and this is the first area plan that we have put together uh, ever. And this is really just an effort to make sure that uh, residents have the ability to age well and live well uh, in King Solari County, regardless of their status in life, uh, senior, et cetera. So um, really look forward to seeking and obtaining uh, community input there um, and having the formal plan be presented to uh, attendees. Uh, and again, appreciate those who have served on the steering committee and also uh, uh, Dr. Helen Miltiatis uh, from Fresno State, who has been uh, uh, guiding us throughout this process, and the SCAN Foundation as well, who uh, uh, put out the grant and put forward the grant that uh, we obtained um, through Dr. Miltiatis uh, for this effort. I think that this having a cohesive plan is critical. Um, I'm also going to be uh, participating in a forum this week uh, regarding a recent LAFCO decision and also the future status and um, information from the city and county uh, regarding the Goshen Community Services District and the city of Eisenhower uh, and various annexation uh, subjects. So I look forward to uh, that forum and putting, putting out some clarifying information uh, uh, from my perspective as one member of LAFCO. 
Uh, Friday, the Dairy Herd Improvement Association of Tulare will be having their annual uh, golf tournament, and I will have the opportunity to participate in that event. And then on uh, Monday, I'm celebrating a personal milestone, but I do think it's uh, worth uh, mentioning. And also, uh, I treat everyone like family, and uh, one uh, thing that families celebrate is wedding anniversaries. So I am uh, celebrating my 13th wedding anniversary uh, with my wife. So uh, very proud of that and uh, looking forward to celebrating. So I, I'm very happy about it. I don't know if she feels the same, but I'm, I'm hopeful that after 13 years, she will. So that's all I've got, Mr. Chair. She deserves a medal. <laughs> yeah, we'll have that next week. Yeah, we're going to send her with a proclamation. Metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, want, you, want to, you want to report as to how that went next week at the Board of Supervisors matter? All right. All right. Give thank you, Mr. Chair. Courage. Uh, since we haven't met for a couple of weeks, has already been said, uh, I just want to highlight some some things. Um, I'm sure everybody has heard. I think at our last meeting or two meetings before, we got our crop report and we weren't sure uh, where we landed, but uh, we landed at number one uh, over Kern. Yes, over Kern and Fresno County. We always jockey, uh, but we're all in line and we're all in it together. And I think it's you know true that we do feed the world right here in the Central Valley. So uh, that was a nice thing. I attended the Nordstrom Rack grand opening at the newly remodeled Sequoia Mall in the, in the city of Visalia. Also the Cineholic uh, downtown, a new cinnamon roll shop there. Um, on a week ago Sunday, I also hosted or emceed the Tulare County Historical Society barbecue at Mooney Grove Park. And um, <clears throat> Supervisor Valero did mention I also did the um, United Way I also, uh, last Friday, was uh, part of a panel for the Visalia Chamber of Commerce Leadership Visalia Group, which uh, one of our own board reps is a part of that, so very happy to see that. And then also took place uh, in the Visalia Centennial Celebration at their National Night Out with Supervisor Valero and Supervisor Macari. A few things coming up um, this week. Tomorrow, I have a homeless task force meeting at 1.30 at our probation department, and those are always streamed live on Facebook, on our HHSA Facebook page, if anybody wants to join in and see all the great things that are happening. And then tomorrow night, I will be uh, cooking, hosting, well, not hosting, it's somewhere, somewhere else, but I've uh, been preparing over the last three days, if I smell like onions, um, marinating shish kebab and making meat for stuffed grape leaves. During the salt and light um, event recently, I donated an Armenian dinner that they auctioned off, and now I have to cook it. Uh, but it will be good. I smell like my grandma, but that's not a bad thing. Um, then on Thursday, I will be in Fresno at my San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District board meeting, coming back and attending our Parks Advisory Committee meeting. And then that evening is a night under the stars at the Cuya Oaks Preserve. Saturday night, I will be attending the Vice, uh, the Tulare County Sheriff's uh, Barn Burner for their PAL program. Um, and then I just uh, lastly want to say, uh, Visalia lost um, a great community leader and um, in, investor in, in Visalia and Mike Fistolera. Uh, Monday will be his celebration of life that I will be hosting. Um, and I just want to say he was a great guy. Thank you. Thanks, Supervisor Sheckman. We'll go to Vice Chair McCarry. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, I'd like to start off with uh, asking everyone to please think and pray for the family in uh, Strathmore. Uh, 5.30 this morning, I was uh, briefed by Chief Norman that uh, we had a fire. Uh, two children are deceased, and uh, it's very, uh, the certainty of the rest of the family is unknown, but it's a very tragic event. So I, I ask you to please keep this family in your thoughts and prayers. A uh, lot of different events. I mean, this has been literally, uh, I have multiple events stacked up all at the same time, seven days a week, but just some of the highlights of what we talked about is I met with the uh, resource management and the Linmore irrigation regarding a, a potential program in Strathmore for Char the Char Lake. We're in discussion with that. Hopefully we can do that and use it um, for flood control as well as recharge to help uh, our water situation in that area. And I hope we can continue moving forward with that. Uh, there was a national night out event at Calvary Visalia. We were all invited to. It was a great event, well attended, and uh, very supportive of, of our local uh, public safety uh, 
people there and staff and all the departments were were there and it was very good. Uh, we had our health fair and I went to that and uh, that was amazing. And uh, we also had the uh, the workforce uh, event next to it. And you wouldn't believe all the people in there uh, looking for work and applying for work and trying to go. And, you know, right now we're losing. I, I, I've been notified that, uh, you know, there's a place in Exeter is going to lose like 300 people. Uh, they're laying them off. We have other businesses. We'll get noticed in this. So there's a lot of companies shutting down. So a lot of people are hurting and looking for work. And it was a great turnout there. Um, we had LAFCO, the Southern California Edison Multicultural Celebration was a great event. I, I attended last year. We all attend. Most of us attended this year, and it was a great turnout. Uh, we had the Miss Exeter Coronation Dinner. Uh, last week was the uh, Exeter Fall Festival, so they had something nearly every night. Uh, we did attend in Farmersville, the Tulare County Area Traffic Incident Management uh, Meeting, where Caltrans gave updates regarding all their different projects uh, countywide uh, for the Area 6. And uh, it was pretty informative. And uh, Supervisor Townsend and I actually had a meeting, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago? And uh, from then to this meeting, it, it changed. The plans changed on some projects. So a lot of this is really fluid, and we're trying to work with them. And uh, they, they're really good about keeping us in, in, informed of what's occurring. Uh, library advisory, we had a family fall, uh, extra fall festival family night. At a, uh, that was just amazing. They had a petting zoo. They had a, a pumpkin carving contest, and it was great to see all the families, everybody out there, and just having a great time. We had our joint meeting with the Sarah, which is our retirement board and the board of supervisors, and uh, we had our annual joint meeting, and things seemed very positive there. I, I think we were kind of not certain how that was going to turn out, uh, the way things are looking with the economy, but it seems like that there may be some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I was invited to the Lindsay Foothill Rotary. Uh, where we met with uh, their local uh, district governor. And uh, that was a great time there. I left there and went straight to hands in the community dinner. And uh, so we ended up, uh, Supervisor Valero and I were there, and that was well attended. And then followed it up with the United Way bre breakfast. We talked about that. Uh, we had the Vice Centennial National Night Out, the Purple Party, and the Happy Trails Roundup. That was all the same night at the same time. I just went from one to the next. And then uh, I attended the Food Truck Festival in Lindsay and then the Sierra View Foundation, uh, KT, AAA, and TCAG. So it is literally seven days a week right now. I didn't touch on almost everything that we had, and uh, there's a lot more. So uh, it's a very busy time. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, and I, I'm not going to touch on all the ones that uh, a bunch of those ones that have already been mentioned. Uh, our Rotary Club did have our district governor from uh, District 5230 uh, visit this last week. And uh, one of the highlights of that is that uh, the, uh, the the Interact and the Rotary Act clubs uh, show up. And they're very healthy in Porterville uh, in, on the high school campus and on the Denver College uh, campus there. And so there's some just really, really, really quality kids coming up through the system right now and uh, that showed up and it just makes you proud. Uh, when they're there. So it was great to have the district governor and all the youth visit uh, the Rotary meeting. And then uh, yesterday, it's been mentioned the TCAG TCTA meeting in Porterville. I did want to thank uh, Porterville for opening up their fire training facility for us to have that meeting out there. We're, I think we're out there about once a year uh, and uh, we appreciate them opening that up. And then um, Vice Chair McCarty mentioned this, but uh, I'm on the Sierra View Foundation board in Porterville raising money for Sierra View uh, Medical Center. And we had our rock and roll for a cause event, and it was just a gorgeous night uh, to be out. I remember the last year it was pretty hot about that same time of year, so it was really nice out there. And uh, I haven't got the the final of uh, what the how many what the funds were that were raised, but they will be helping to support the uh, uh, the catheterization lab there in Porterville with some uh, with some new equipment with the proceeds from that event and the golf tournament the, that the uh, that the foundation puts on. Uh, and uh, Supervisor Vanderpool mentioned that we will both be sitting in on a forum uh, regarding some LAFCO annexations and sewer issues, Goshen area, on Thursday. Uh, and then Saturday, I will uh, be attending the treasure trove uh, by, uh, that the Porterville Exchange Club puts on every year out at the Exeter Memorial Building. And I'm just going to stop right there. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> it's that time of year. Uh, next, item number two on the agenda, we're going to present a certificate recognizing Alta Healthcare District for its many contributions to Northern Tulare County, and I've asked Supervisor Valero to make that presentation. All right. Thank you, Chair. 
At this time, I would like to call up Yvette Botello, the president of the Alta Healthcare District, along with Javi Quevedo, board member, and Yolanda Valdez, who is actually a recipient of the Alta Healthcare District grants. And so, uh, Yvette, if you would like to just come up and and uh, briefly just share what Alta Healthcare District does. After that, I've asked Yolanda Valdez to also share a few words, and then I will uh, share and then present you with the plaque. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Didn't have anything planned here. Um, Alta Healthcare District uh, was in bankruptcy for many years. And we finally came out of bankruptcy. And in that time, I think it's been four to five years, we've been able to fund different um, projects that are needed within the Alta district. Um, anywhere from, what were those called, A AEDs? Yes. Yeah, we gave out about 38 AEDs. We helped um, Cutler Rossi with a walking path along with exercise equipment. We helped City of Dinuba with two ambulances, and I think a third one may be in the works. Um, gosh, we've we've just done a lot. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> and then Yolanda, like, and Javi, if you'd like to. Well, I just want to thank the Alta Healthcare. Um, district uh, in Cutler Arosi, an unincorporated community, your community, um, uh, probably your largest unincorporated community. There are very little, there's very few resources. One of the things that we have done in the community is really focus not on the challenges that we have as a community, but on what we can do. And I want to thank several of the directors here from Tulare County and Supervisor Valero, who has really helped us go out and obtain resources so that we are able to build a sports complex uh, that the district did build for the community and for the use of students, primarily for the use of students, but we we have it for the community. But what was really, really special is, is this collaboration between the Alta Healthcare District and this project. When you think of the community of Cutler Arosi and the health challenges, the diabetes, the obesity, the health concerns of that community, and then you give them a facility where they can go out and take charge of their health. That's exactly what has happened. Any day that I'm having a, a low day, I go out there and drive around that sports complex. And what you're going to see is mothers pushing their children through the walking path. You're going to see uh, people of all ages in the exercise equipment. And I passed up by there going to a school today. And there was this young lady, man, she was making me tired just watching her. But they're using that equipment. They are becoming healthier. And what the what a great gift that you give a community health. And that is exactly what we've done with this collaboration. So I want to thank and and there's a little a little joke here because they both are standing together and they should be because they both belong to this committee, <laughs> the Alta Healthcare um, District. So I just want to thank you. Thank you for investing in the exercise equipment at our sports complex. Thank you for investing in the lighting because we know that it's not lit up early in the morning and it's not lit up or it, it goes dark very early now. And you can go out there and people are walking and exercising early in the morning and late into the evening. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you to Elta Healthcare and also for the, to the school district. Eddie, thank you. Board members, thank you for everything you do for our community. Thank you guys. Thank you. I also would like to thank all of you for having a broad vision for what's to come for the entire community and the region. So we appreciate that very much. Awesome. With that being said, the Alta Healthcare District is an organization committed to supporting the well-being of children, youth, and families in the communities it serves. 
One way in which the district achieved this goal is by providing grants to organizations that share its mission. And again, these grants are designed to support a variety of initiatives, as mentioned, from after-school programs to mental, mental health initiatives to physical fitness and community health safety. Elta Healthcare District has also sought community support and feedback. This was achieved through a recent community forum. Uh, by engaging with community members, the district uh, was also able to better understand the needs of the community and tailor its resources to meeting those needs. The impact of the Alta Healthcare District's contributions to the communities it serves cannot be overstated. By supporting initiatives that promote this well being, the district is helping to build stronger, healthier communities. Through its grants, community engagement, and commitment to improving the lives of those it serves, the Alta Healthcare District is making a meaningful difference in the lives of countless individuals across Northern Tulare County. So, with that being said, this is a certificate of recognition in honor of Alta Healthcare District's continued contributions to Northern Tulare County. Thank you for your unwavering commitment and um, also to partnering with the various nonprofits, school districts, and organizations in our communities. Signed by District 1, Larry McCarry, District 2, Supervisor uh, Vanderpool, Supervisor Amy Shuckley, and District 3. Uh, myself, uh, Eddie Valero, District 4, and our chair, Dennis Townsend, District 5. So what we will do, oh, we can, I guess we'll, we'll, do, we'll take a picture, we'll come into the well, and then if you want to stand, and then. Very good. And with that, we will move on to item number three on our agenda, which is our time for public comment. Uh, anybody wishing to address the board this evening on an item that is not on the agenda, but that's pertinent to board matters? Doesn't look like anyone in the crowd. Do we have any uh, written correspondence or emails? We do not. Okay. Last chance. Okay, we'll close the public uh, comment time then, and we will move on to our consent calendar, which is items four through 26. And do any of the board have any they'd like to pull for separate consideration or comment? I don't see any. Anyone in the crowd like to pull any for separate consideration? All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for motion. I move okay. to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by uh, uh, Vice Chair McCarty, a second by... Uh, Supervisor Shecklin, and we have to do a roll call on this. So if uh, Madam Clerk, if you will take a roll call. Supervisor McCarry? Aye. Supervisor Vanderpool? Aye. Supervisor Shecklin? Aye. Supervisor Valero? Aye. Supervisor Townsend? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. All right. Thank you. We'll move on to item number 27. Request from the clerk of the board to appoint a member and alternate member of the Board of Supervisors to serve as a representative on the California State Association of Counties Board of Directors for the 2023-2024 association year. Yes, Mr. Chair, this is our annual um, appointment for a member of the board to serve as its representatives on the California State Association of Counties. We would need a, a board member and an alternate, and we currently have Supervisor Shucklin, who is our board member, and then uh, Supervisor Vanderpool is your alternate. All right, I'll bring it back to the board uh, for nominations. Mr. Chair, I think we should keep the uh, slate the way that it is. I think Supervisor Shuckling does a great job for us uh, as the main board member at CSAC, and she never misses a meeting, so the alternate's not needed. <laughs> That's a bonus right there. <laughs> All right. We have a motion by Supervisor Vanderpool to retain the same slate. Do we have a second? Second by Supervisor Valero, and we'll have a roll call vote. Supervisor Makari? Aye. Supervisor Vanderpool? Aye. Supervisor Shuckland? 
Aye. <laughs> Supervisor Valero. Aye. Supervisor Townsend. Aye. Motion passes five zero. All right. Thank you. And thank you, uh, uh, Supervisor Shuckling and Supervisor Vanderpool for being that alternate that doesn't do anything. But thank you very much. <laughs> just, just like you. Thank you for being there, man. All right. All right. We'll go to item number 28, which is a request from the Resource Management Agency to approve a financial assistance application for a financing agreement from the State Water Resources Control Board. And we have Ross. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> All right. Good evening, um, Chair Townsend and Supervisors, Mr. Britt, Ms. Flores. Uh, my name is Ross Miller. I'm a Chief Engineer with the Resource Management Agency, and I'm here to talk to you about East Erosi and the grant application before you. Um, I'll try to keep it fairly brief, being that a lot of us have dogs to get home to and some of us probably families, but with that... <clears throat> East Erosi is a smaller community in northern Tulare County, a population of about 900. Um, the East Erosi Community Services District previously provided them with water and sewer services uh, for about 103 water connections with a service area of about 50 acres. And a while ago, the state uh, water board approached the county and worked with us on an agreement that led to the county becoming appointed as the administrator for the water system in East Erosi. This means that the county has taken over. We are responsible for the provision of water. We do the budgeting. We do agreements. We do everything on behalf of the district. The district still exists. They still provide sewer service. We are just the um, <clears throat> water provider for them. This Appointment started in November of 2022 and was effective for two years, and it can be renewed. As part of this, we have a separate agreement with the state that um, under the SAFER program that also provides for reimbursement for any costs that the county would otherwise be out of pocket for the operation of this water system. So we have money to be the administrator, and then what we bring in from the um, customers is supposed to cover all of the costs to operate. And if there's any shortfalls, the safer grant picks up the rest. The administrator program has a big focus, which is how to basically end the administrator program. It is once someone is assigned, where do we take it from here? How do we get it so there's a new permanent operation? And in the case of East Erosi, the project since before we have, that we as a county were appointed has been to connect the East Erosi community to the water system in Erosi, as well as providing a new well as part of this project. Just checking my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything important on that. Um, the This construction project will include um, a new distri new water distribution system in the community of East Erosi. It will include the pipeline between East Erosi and Erosi. It will include a pipeline from Erosi to a new well site that we are working on purchasing from the, she has left, but the Cutler Erosi Joint Unified School District. And <clears throat> the ultimate project again is to connect all of that with the row C PUD becoming the full-time operator and owner of this new system and its expanded form. The uh, project is currently in design. Um, as of a few days ago, we have 60% plans that have been completed. The total construction timeline looks like it would end in late 2025. The program that we are dealing with here is called the emergency uh, sorry, give me one second, EDWG, Emergency Drought Water Grant, I believe. That sounds correct. Um, and this program is basically designed to help streamline the water board's review process. Some of their processes can take about a year before from the submission of the agreement until we would get a, uh, or, sorry, from the submission of the application until we would get an agreement back to sign. So this is kind of expediting that, reducing some of their lead time. Unfortunately, because of the way scheduling works, it doesn't, you know, them taking nine months less to review does not unfortunately result in a total of nine months off the project. 
but it does help speed up the project and it does help bring a lot of our stakeholders together and give the county a lot more authority in this project going forward as all of the components up to this point have been kind of piecemealed together from various grants, technical assistances, um, and in some cases, just the, you know, goodness of people's hearts. Are there any questions on this matter? Right. Do we have any questions for Ross? Yes. No, no just, uh, comment or comment. Yes. So I just want to say again, thank you, Ross, Reed, and the RMA department for your leadership on this very important project. Each day, we're getting closer to finding a uh, solution to the challenges faced in Easter OC. And so again, I appreciate this item coming before the board um, and showing us that the state is committed to finding a resolution and we'll continue to do that. And so again, thank you um, for your work on this. Thanks, Supervisor Bolero. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, I will bring it back uh, to the board for action. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Uh, uh, Supervisor Bolero uh, uh, moves for approval. Supervisor Vanderpool seconded, and we'll ask for the roll call from Madam Clerk. Supervisor Makari? Aye. Supervisor Vanderpool? Aye. Supervisor Shelkland? Aye. Supervisor Bolero? Aye. Supervisor Townsend? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Should we do it? Okay. Sorry. I missed public comment on that one. Is there anyone that had a public comment <laughs> on that one? <laughs> Kind of just slid right by that. Anybody? The votes could still change. They could. All right. Do we take or do we have to recall the vote? Okay. All right. There were uh, let the record show there were no public comments. All right. Thank you. Not now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And now we're down to uh, item number twenty nine. Uh, board matter request. Do any of the members of the board have an item they'd like to see on a future agenda? I don't see any. And uh, we don't have any further need for closed session. All right. So uh, with that, just thanks to all the board staff for coming, helping set up. Thanks to uh, TCICT for putting things together. I know there are a lot of challenges when we move off site. That's the last one this year, by the way. So you're off the hook for the rest of the time. <laughs> and thanks to all the staff and all of you for following us over here and uh, to the city of Dinuba for allowing us to use their facilities this evening. And with that, we will adjourn. Have a safe rest of the evening. Bye.